it's an utmost pleasure to um, be here um, on that fantastic conference. Um, and I will be showing you today about pelvic floor ultrasound. Um, just to say that there will be a workshop afterwards. So if you have any questions, you can write them down and we can discuss um, your, uh, your questions afterwards. So a bit about me, I have interest in pelvic floor since actually I was registrar and I did it in Poland. Um, and then I started pelvic floor MRI and the most ancient method of imaging in pelvic floor, the fluorogram, I actually started as the late, latest modality. And now I combine all three of them in my uh, practice, but ultrasound is my favorite. Um, I am not going to talk about anatomy, so, so just uh, to say that really our patients have, um, 30, around 30% of patients have problems in all three compartments and the ultrasound being very easily accessible uh, method can be used uh, as an as a initial stage, initial examination for pelvic floor assessment. So what kind of ultrasounds to assess pelvic floor we, we, we've got? So there is the most um, uh, kind of, the, the, the widely available, it's, it's transperineal ultrasound only because it can be performed by use of any of the, of the probes, ultrasound probes. Um, then can be as well a 3D or 4D transperineal ultrasound, which is only performed in speci on specific scanners which have got that 3D um, probes. And endovaginal 3D ultrasound and 3D endoanal ultrasounds to assess uh, pelvic floor muscles and to assess anal sphincters. So uh, having all those modalities, we can actually be in that red circle uh, and we can uh, prevent that um, um, argument between surgeons, urogynecologists and urologists to decide who's doing what because all of them need to come together and just do what we can tell them to do. Right, so transperineal ultrasound, as I said, the easiest um, way to perform the ultrasound of the pelvic floor is to just put the convex probe or, um, or even um, TV probe, uh, end fire probe uh, on the perineum, then we call it transperineal ultrasound. On the labia, then we will call it translabial, or on the introitus, then we call it introital, transintroital ultrasound. And to assess the relations between the uh, pelvic floor organs. I will be showing on the workshop how we do it. There will be more in detail on the workshop. Uh, but just now for, for your information, uh, as you can see on the, on the scheme, the patient is lying uh, down in supine position and the probe is directed um, that bladder is seen on the left side, on the right side of the screen. Um, pubic bone is, um, is here as hyperechoic uh, area. This is the urethra bladder. Vagina, the patient had hysterectomy, so we can see actually just artifact or bowels uh, in this area. This is the rectum, the anal canal, perineal body, and puborectalis muscle. Um, transperineal ultrasound can be used, obviously, in patients with uh, urinary problems, with urinary incontinence. And um, it's very good uh, uh, quick assessment, uh, dynamic assessment, when we ask patients to squeeze her muscles um, then to see how the pelvic floor actually li is lifted by, uh, by the muscle contraction. And if we ask the patient to, to strain, to see if there is any descent of the, um, of the pelvic organs. There are various angles which can be measured uh, to assess um, the, um, if patient suffers from urinary incontinence, and I'm sure Hiba can tell you a bit more about it. <laughs> Uh, but um, also very easy way to see the patient actually has got it. Uh, it's, we can appreciate the opening of the bladder neck. The patient is actually straining and there is urine leak active uh, happening during the scanning. Patients quite often come and they just think it's normal to have it. And when we see that picture, um, we, we ask her, do you have maybe suffer from urinary incontinence? And they say, oh yes, yes, I actually have got it. So um, with the easy study, we can just tell them a bit more detail about the, their, uh, the symptoms and they can be maybe less ashamed of it, actually, and they can start talking openly about it uh, with, uh, with doctors. Uh, the, other w the other thing that we can assess is pelvic organ prolapse. Um, so here is our normal anatomy here on the, on the top um, picture. And this is the line, the red line, is the line which is referral line for the measurements on the transperineal ultrasound. 
The line goes on the inferior margin of the pubic bone, which is here, pubic bone, and whatever, and the patient is straining. So whatever is below the line, uh, it's, it's abnormal. And there are different measurements uh, we, which we can perform. So the, the descent of the bladder, uh, the descent of the uh, rectum, the descent of the bowel, and also the uh, width of the uh, rectocele. So in this patient, we can see she has got cystocele, she has got rectocele, and she has got tiny enterocele as well here, um, bowel loops coming uh, down the, uh, the line. So translabial ultrasound can be used as initial inv investigation of the defecatory, dis defecatory disorders. Sorry, yes. Uh, on this picture, we can see that there is a uh, significant cystocele, again, taken picture on maximal straining. And the TPUS has got very good proportion of predictions for bladder prolapse. Um, the same study showed that it has also very good proportion of uh, predictions for um, rectocele. I think it's quite self-explanatory that it's massive uh, rectocele here demonstrated on, on this picture. And about middle compartment, it's a bit, it's not as perfect as for anterior and posterior, but enterocele is quite difficult to see because of the artifacts of, from the bowel and, and middle compartment on the transperineal ultrasound in general is difficult to see because of the artifacts. Uh, but this is the picture actually showing how we can differentiate the enterocele. Obviously, in pres in a, with history of hysterectomy, we can uh, expect it. Uh, more often in those patients. Um, and so this is enterocele here, and this is the erectocele, uh, so combined problems. It's important for the, for the gynecologist to know if there is enterocele or not, because it changes their approach to the patient, so um, just initial scan can tell us. If we have doubts, obviously, we can do much more uh, um, advanced scans, or we can send her for MRI to just assess it more in detail. Uh, TPUS showed, however, a very good correlation between um, POPQ system, which is the qualified system used by your gynecologist um, for all three compartments of the prolapse. So we can actually measure those points uh, for the POPQ system on the transperineal ultrasound, and the correlation will be statistically significant. Um, there is, um, let's say, new, quite spectacular-looking 3D and 4D transperineal ultrasound, so it's exactly the same probe used for baby scans, which is used on the transperineum, and we can see nicely, nice pictures of the, um, of the muscles and of, of, the, of the prolapsing organs, but there is no superiority of, of 4D TPUS over TPU, TPUS in diagnostics of uh, pelvic organ prolapse, so just for the sake of nice pictures, we can do it, but not really for diagnostic purposes. Um, right, so now a few minutes about something more, more advanced than just transperineal. Um, this is, um, on purpose, I'm just showing into anal scan first, because that's the probe which, is, which has been developed for assessment of, of anal sphincters. It's 360 degree probe, it has got automatic acquisition, it's rotational probe, we just press the button and for one minute we have that cube. Um, which is um, showing, uh, our, uh, showing the muscles. So the endoanal scan, which was, as I said, proposed invented for it, is the gold standard for the assessment of anal sphincter integrity. How do we assess it? Exactly like on the MRI, like Hiba showed us. We have the upper or deep anal canal, which is um, the layer when we see uh, the, the pu pu pubertalis muscle. In the middle anal canal, we have got external sphincter, which is hyperechoic, and we have internal, which is hypoechoic and subcutaneous layer is only external sphincter. As we assess if there is any scar in, uh, um, in, in, those, in those muscles. So here we have an example of scar of the internal sphincter with associated external sphincter scarring. And we can always ask patients to squeeze, then if there is a real scar, um, then it will be um, expanded during the squeeze. So, in England, we do it quite often in our institution uh, for every patient who had um, vagina delivery to assess if she can have another vagina delivery, if she had any tear in the past, to assess actually if she can have it. Uh, so it's a very important scan really uh, in, um, in obstetrics. 
So, as I said, the same probe, this is how it's built, and people from um, the workshop can tell you a bit more about how that uh, fantastic probe actually works. Um, so, uh, so, so, so the same probe, um, we just can I insert it into vagina, and we can see the pelvic floor entirely. Uh, this is how the acquisition is being taken, and this is how we can post-process our images. Uh, we can um, we can rotate it in every angle. We can uh, make obviously work on work on the brightness, work on the contrast, um, and we can uh, try and uh, see our um, organs and structures from every single uh, plane. And this is the tape that patient had inserted. Um, as you can see, that's what we can we can do with the with those pictures. So we will be working on those pictures on the workshop. So come and um, come and see. Yes. Um, so once we have acquired the pictures, we need to interpret them. Obviously, uh, this is normal anatomy. Uh, this is the um, axial plane, the urethra, um, elevator, and I and the um, anorectum. This is the probe in the vagina. Yes, and this is the sagittal plane, urethra entirely seen, the anal canal with the rectum, this is the puborectalis muscle, and perineal body will be in here. Uh, we can assess it on different uh, levels, and there has been published a paper, uh, initial paper about it, uh, which suggests four levels of assessment. Please do not confuse it with those three levels of the Lancy. This is a different thing. This is four levels of assessment. The most deepest one is when we see the bladder with the rectum. Um, then the uh, second level one is urethra, anal canal, and the uh, le levator uh, on both sides. And we can see that actually in normal anatomy, all those three structures are in, in one line, in the midline. Um, the, um, the next level, more outer, more distal, but distal level, is when we can see pubic uh, bone, and when we can see anal canal and again pubovisceralis muscle. And, and the last level is when we actually can see superficial muscles, so bulbous pongiosus muscle, superficial transverse perineal muscle, and um, is, uh, yes, and urethra and the uh, distal um, anal canal. Um, we can assess, obviously, as you have just seen it, the muscle is nicely seen on that ultrasound, so we can assess if there is an evolution. This is the, the Lancy score used for the MRI. Um, but there's no difference really in assessing it on the ultrasound. And this is the transperineal 3D ultrasound, the fancy one uh, for the baby scan. Also no difference, uh, but here is, I think, more information more clear and more detailed about all the fibers of the muscle. So this is normal anatomy. There's no tear. Um, this is minor avulsion. This is minor avulsion on the MRI. And the same uh, comparison, this is minor avulsion on the 3D uh, EVOS and major evolution also on uh, 3D EVOS. So we have compiled three methods and we see actually that it's very good sensitivity of EVOS and specificity also is even higher than MRI, which means that um, it can be used uh, for assessment of the pelvic floor muscles with no, um, uh, uh, no underestimation. Uh, some studies have gone further and they have subdivided, have, have um, defined subdivisions of the elevator NI muscle. Um, so uh, it can be directly compared obviously with MRI and with the um, other studies, but that's maybe not easy task, but if someone is more keen on it, it can be done. Uh, right, so we can all, so this was all general uh, assessment of the pelvic floor, but we can have more focused anterior compartment assessment. Um, so obviously urethra, um, I think much clearer you can see urethra on this scan than on the transperineal scan. There is, I think, no doubt about it. Uh, this is the axial plane. Uh, this is the axial plane, and you can have histological correlation with uh, rhabdosphincter, circular muscle, urethral lumen here. Uh, so I think it's just perfect, um, perfect anatomical uh, detail on this ultrasound. Uh, and also on the sagittal plane, you can see bladder neck clearly. We can see rhabdosphincter muscle. Um, and we can see the distal urethra with external uh, orifice. The probe is in the vagina, so this is the probe, this is the pubic bone. 
so important facts about some studies performed that actually the, pa the patient who failed continent surgery had smaller urethral sphincter muscle than those who had um, uh, who were cured. And also, uh, the urethral volume of the, of the sphincter is associated with degree of the symptoms. So again, ultrasound can just predict even surgery and can, can predict the uh, effect of the surgery for those patients. Um, and measurements are reliably uh, reproducible, so can be uh, easily scanned by one person and some other people can assess it and have the uh, same results. Um, in our institution, mainly what we use it for the urethral, uh, sorry, for, the, for, 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 for patients with, with, a, with a, um, lumps in their vagina. And why it's important? Because it's a quite often the question is, oh, has she got a prolapse or has she got a mass or what's that? If it's vaginal, it will go uh, to gynecologist. If it's urethral, they won't touch it. Uro urologist needs to come on board. Um, so some examples why, how, how we can uh, um, differentiate it. Uh, so can be urethral vaginal uh, mass. So, so we, we usually used to do MRIs before. Um, and this is an example of the patient with paraurethral cyst. So very um, uh, distally located uh, mass. Um, this is the sequence. High resolution sequence um, showing us that actually that is uh, with connected to urethra. Um, and this is on the ultrasound example, I think quite perfect. So this is the urethra here. And just to show you quickly, you will have that case on the workshop. You can come and work it out yourself. Urethra lumen here with the cyst. So one minute scan and MRI protocol is around 20 minutes. And we've got an answer, actually, she goes to urologist. Another example here, urethra is nicely seen. Uh, this is in the vagina. So this is probe in the vagina. This is the vaginal mass. So this is Gartner cyst. So she's going to gynecologist to have a, a read of it. Um, uh, quickly about posterior compartment, just to show. So again, we can see uh, from vagina, we can have a look at the posterior compartment. It's not easy to assess it, but as I said, the most important thing will be to see if there is that entero seal there and, um, and how it's maybe anismus also. So, so, so there is the, the probe in the vagina again. We can, this is vaginal wall, perineal body, anal canal, sphincters, um, and the pubertalis muscle uh, seen. And this is, this, is, this is not a normal, this is pathology, obviously. Correlation with fluoroscan and um, again, uh, probe in the vagina. So this is the rectum and this is the uh, anterior vagina, sorry, this is the uh, rectal wall going into vagina. So a person has got rectal seal. In the folding of the wall, tells us this is interception. And the here also here bowels pushing from above. So she has go also enterocele. So we can also assess on the ultrasound more complex abnormalities. Last slide. Uh, what technique is the best then? Um, so, so, so ultrasound can be used uh, interchanging the interchangeably in the assessment of pelvic, posterior pelvic for disorders. Um, EP is not the best ima imaging. MRI uh, is good. And ultrasound actually has got similar um, findings and can be used as an as alternative. Um, so uh, I think that ultrasound actually is very important for perfect um, for, 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 for the above mentioned reasons. Um, and it's also crucial in um, assessment of the failures, which we're probably talking about that after me. Um, and new areas maybe for the use of it, role in biofeedback. Uh, maybe a role in neurodynamics if you can see urethra better. Uh, there's so much potential of studies. If anyone interested, just give us a shout and see you on the workshop, please. Come and have a look. Thank you. And now I need to introduce Rania. Uh, she will be talking about.